I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus in Denver, and today I'm going to be showing how to clean ostrich skin boots. We've got a pair of Luke Casey ostrich in a darker reddish color. It's kind of more of like that cordovan color to it. And then a pair of uh, Tony Llama lighter tan. Well, technically this is light brown is what it's categorized as. And so we're going to be good. We're going to go ahead and clean and treat them. Uh, we have also resold these already, so we've got new soles on both of these. But I didn't do a video on the resold process of these guys, so it was quite a bit of work already going on. So we'll go ahead and get started on just the cleaning and treating of the uppers. Now, as far as ostrich goes, it's a little more of a finicky type of uh, leather, I guess you could say. It's an exotic leather, leather that's you know very sensitive and depends on the color of course now if you have the darker colors like these here they definitely will be a little bit easier to maintain and treat where the lighter ones they really show staining easily now our first step of course is to clean and because these are fairly worn and damaged what we're gonna have to do is actually spray them down to the mixture solution that we mix here if you're doing this at home and you've got a lot of salt staining or water staining like these ones do here in certain areas you're gonna want to grab some desalter and uh, some Lincoln easy cleaner and clean it up usually in general you you want to be using the easy cleaner anyways to clean if they've got a little bit of dirt and stuff on them but um, because they've got water damage, we're gonna be mixing basically the two is what I would recommend. But what we have is a mixture of desalter, vinegar, and, um, and the easy cleaner a little bit in this spray bottle here uh, because we need a larger surface area. And always when you are cleaning, if you're using anything that gets the shoe wet, like a cream, a cleaner, a polish, or anything like that, you don't do just one section at a time. You want to make sure you do the whole thing all at once. So, oh, sorry, I'm kind of out of frame there. You always want to do it all at once. And I'm holding this away from the table right now because it kind of splatters a little bit. But I'm using a soft bristle nylon brush just to clean it up a bit. I'll grab my dirt wiping towel here a little bit, wipe everything off. And we're just gonna let these sit for just a little bit. You can see, you know, it's definitely wetter and definitely can tell that there's something on it. So it's gonna take a little while to dry, but I'm gonna set these aside while I go through all of them doing that. And then we're gonna move on to the next step with our cleaning process alone. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. So I'm, we gotta make sure also these dry nicely as well. All right, so I thought I'd show you guys real quick. I ended up uh, going with the dark one as well. I forgot to mention also, but we're gonna go ahead and do the darker ones as well, just a little bit. Now the darker ones, the color had come off just a little bit more, definitely. And to me, that indicates that there is some polish, as you can clearly see. Sorry, I'm quite a bit out of frame here right now, but yeah, there's quite a bit that's coming off on there, which definitely indicates there's polish on there. But yeah, this anyways just indicates that there's a little too much polish and stuff on there, which is fine. That's where the next step comes in for cleaning anyways. So we'll go ahead and move on with that. Uh, I've allowed the, um, the boots kind of to dry for a good little while. They don't necessarily need to dry for a full 20, 30 minutes or half hour or anything um, because the next step that we're going to be doing, it's going to allow us to um, clean it regardless as well. So let me grab a new towel. I had a, another towel to wipe down, but for the next step, we definitely need a cleaner towel. All right, got me a fresh towel, at least for the lighter ones now. Probably should have grabbed it beforehand. But I'm trying to do this so that I can show you the difference between the light and the dark. Now the dark is a lot easier again to maintain when it comes to ostrich. The lighter ones, now they're a little bit of a different, uh, different story altogether. But 
that spray did help quite a bit the spray down with everything if you're going to be uh, desalting the steps that you're going to be taking you're going to of course take a horsehair brush and kind of buff off any old dust or anything else that may be able to be brushed off first beforehand um, and then afterwards of course you're going to be doing this now we didn't brush it off because we've already uh, blown it off with compressed air because we've been working on the soles we had to blow the dust off all the time multiple times so the dust was all off as much as possible anyways but if you were to do it uh, at home brush it up with a horsehair brush take your desalter first and go through and clean it and everything if you're just going to do that lower section you're perfectly fine with that the upper usually doesn't really need it and then afterwards you're going to take your easy cleaner and do the same thing as well and clean it all up you don't have to necessarily wait for either one of these to really dry too much um, at least if you're going to be taking the next step now the next step that we're going to be using is the Saphir Reno mat which is formulated with uh, turpentine it's a pine based turpentine it's designed to remove old polishes waxes and creams and some silicone as well and that is only kind of like a last resort that I recommend using if you're doing this at home and if you're not experienced I don't recommend you using this no rubbing alcohol no uh, acetone no thinner no spot remover nothing that is strong or harsh you know that's that's something that I highly recommend that you either take it to a professional or if you're experienced enough with it if you're willing to risk it you may cause some damage to that upper so you know just be advised <clears throat> but you know if you're gonna be doing just your regular treatment like that and it works out fine sorry cut out there but you skip the step with the reno mat and then um, allow it to dry for a good 20 to 30 minutes especially with the lighter color because it's going to really show that water marking that's left over from the liquids of these so allow it to dry thoroughly before moving on but for now at least i'm going to show you otherwise if you're not going to if you're not going to be using this, um, you can go ahead and skip forward if you'd like, but I'm going to go ahead and show us doing this here at least real quick, at least on one boot for now with the lighter ones. Reno mat, of course, it's not as strong as acetone or even rubbing alcohol, but it's very nice because it's formulated for removing old polishes and waxes, the buildup and everything it's not going to treat very well when it comes to staining from say water damage that first step that i showed you that's what you're going to use so you know just uh don't scrub too hard that's all it is if you scrub some spots like right there i did scrub just a little bit harder you're fine make sure you change out your spots a little bit too on the towel And keep in mind also if you end up uh, hitting the edging on the sole or the heel base with this stuff it is going to pull off the dye pigment a little bit now as far as the uppers if they're not ostrich which almost none of them are i've only seen just a small handful of boots where they're entirely made of ostrich the upper here you don't necessarily need to go through with uh, the reno mat if you like again go through the whole boot with this instead um, it'll do a nice light clean which I did already by spraying it down uh, with that mixture that we had and then afterwards kind of brushing it over but if you end up using the reno mat don't necessarily go through there unless there's like a few spots like I see one right here there's something there I'm gonna see if I can treat that but if you go through it all one you're gonna be spending more time more money and uh, it's just no point for it. just check around if you see spots then go through it with this uh, reno mat here the other reason why i don't recommend it is if you have stitching like this here the problem is those stitches can get darker say you have a spot like that right there that you cleaned up and uh, you know you're scr you're going through this will transfer over to the nylon stitching or cotton stitching if you have it, whatever it may be but mostly nylon anyways it'll transition over to the stitches and if you have a mixture of say black and white stitches the black stitches no one cares about but the white stitches they're going to darken up and show a lot even light colors like the uh, beigeish tan color that's in here and the brown you don't want that color transition on these it's just not gonna not gonna turn out good looking 
unless your goal is to either way change the color of those stitches you know by all means go through it and clean it but if you're going to be changing the color you actually want to use something a little bit uh, stronger anyways well if you're going to be changing the color of the overall shaft or the boot but if you just want to color the stitches by all means you know you're going to go through with a pigmented cream polish at that point it's going to rub off and wear off over time and you have to reapply it regardless so that's that all right so we got that one boot there and i'll do the other light one off camera i'll let those dry for a good uh 15 minutes to allow those turpentines to really evaporate out of there and it just helps it out significantly you know to let it dry thoroughly because again the water markings they can turn out kind of bad i mean i mean these uh he's definitely have a bit of damage there i mean camera doesn't really show it that much but there is still water damage i mean not as bad definitely it's a lot more improved but uh, we'll see once it's dry how how intense it is or not but we'll move on to this one here i don't know why i closed this off and we'll just uh see really how much polish is on here now one of the other things is also with this cordovan color that everyone calls it it's the number eight color is in most industries is what they consider it to be it is actually layered a true shell a, sh a true cordovan shoe is actually shell cordovan it's the membrane that comes off of a horse um, so it's not quite a leather that's a true shell cordovan there this is a number eight color it's just nicknamed cordovan color and it's layered so you want to be a little bit careful not to overdo it with these you just lightly scrub over it clean your spots and that's it if you scrub too hard on a particular spot you're really going to take out a lot of the dye that is layered on there and you don't want that but you can see quite a bit of that came off that was the wax and uh, waxes or polish that was in there again the reason why i know is because the dye that they put on there doesn't rub off that easily when it comes to the mixture that we had like if you're using the desalter or the easy cleaner that i have over here if it rubs off a little bit most of the time that means because you had some kind of old polish on there so you got to go through with the reno mat but again very very light pressure and just kind of go around clean it off just a little bit okay and we don't want to scrub too hard and same thing allow it to dry for about you know 15 20 minutes uh, sometimes even 30 minutes you may need it to it's harder to tell on the darker colors but if you have dark and light and you're doing it at the same time the light ones will be a great indicator for you that's why we start out with the light ones because we're going to continue on with those first after they're all dry and then these are going to get the treatment after all right so i'm going to finish them all out on ca off of camera as far as cleaning the rest of it let it dry and then we'll be back over here for the next steps on that so we'll see you in a few all right so we've allowed it to dry looks like that's about the best that it can get unfortunately i wish there was a little more that we can do but uh we'll have to move on to the next step now with the next step in general usually what i recommend for exotics is using one of these two either the reptin or delicate cream for the uppers on these but the problem is that the color is damaged on it now if you came into our shop asking for this color because you wanted the ostrich you know color re restored on it you really have to be careful you have to be you know a little more experienced i guess you can say at least some practice with it but for general maintenance for the lighter color i would definitely recommend using the delicate cream from Safir's beauty to cure line um, it's got uh, wheat protein and jojoba oil so it's a little more delicate it doesn't have the mink oil or the lanolin in it so it doesn't uh, get a little too harsh or anything on there but if you have a darker color, that's where I would bring in the Renovator. Now, this is a larger jar. Usually you get one about that size um, there. And then we've got the Medal Dior, which is a step up in the Renovator cream. But this one tends to work out very well. It's got mink oil in it as well. You know, if your uppers aren't extremely dirty, you don't have to do the cleaning process or anything, or you just need a very, very light clean, you know, your renovator or your delicate cream would be perfectly fine because they're all water-based, so the water is going to 
do very well when it comes to cleaning it and then of course you got the ingredients that will help nourish it with the wheat protein in here and jojoba oil and then the mink oil and there's some beeswax in this one as well that'll help protect it now renovator i do not recommend using on your lighter colors because of that mink oil it darkens the upper a lot i mean it ends up blotchy looking it doesn't just darken it all in one shade it makes it very blotchy but um again it's something you want to be a little more careful with now regardless either way we're going to be starting out with our delicate cream for these uh, to get the nourishment back into the uppers quite a bit and uh, restore all that nutrients now we'll work on the color afterwards but the uh, colored cream here it has a little less ingredients in there for nourishment as well so we'll start out with just doing that and you can use this on the uppers here too and just kind of help condition it all too now i like to use the dauber brushes just because it helps me get a larger surface area and then also get into the nooks and crannies of everywhere especially in these wealth areas here now because we just resold them it's got fresh wax and everything all over it so i don't necessarily need to go in where the welt is right now but if you haven't had your boots resold or redone then it's the perfect time to get in there and kind of scrub a little bit i recommend doing that last of course just because it can get a little dirty on the brush but either way you're gonna to have to take your brush and clean it off on the towel or something that's how it extends the life expectancy of those dauber brushes but we've got that one we're gonna let it sit and dry and then i'll show you the darker one i'll finish out the other one off camera but uh, let's see which one did I do okay this one was the first one I did I allow these to dry for a good while as well anyways and um, you now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and use the renovator cream where's my renovator brush now with the darker ones I could use the renovator cream to restore the nutrients that mink oil is gonna be a little bit stronger than what's in the delicate cream but because they're already dark it's not gonna do anything to harm the coloring on it at all so for different shades it'd be a good idea to have a few different colors but same story get around in there nicely let it soak in well soaking in quite a bit of this cream in there okay so it doesn't take long on that sorry I forgot about the brushing but you grab a larger horsehair brush like this just kind of buff it over real quick just to get some of that access out not too much just uh, just a little quick buff over and some of the nooks and crannies but allow at least 60 seconds maybe even up to five minutes to kind of soak in a little bit but my goal with the brush at the moment was just to remove some of the access off of there so i'll set this one aside and i completely forgot about this one but now nah, it soaked it in very well we don't really need to buff it over too much or anything maybe just a little on the upper area here let's see how that works okay Georgia boat well the delicate cream sorry seems to have done pretty well as far as uh, drying up nicely and everything so now at this point actually if you're happy with the results you can see it's got a little bit of a shimmer because it's got some form of wax extracts in here in the delicate cream so I'll give you a little bit of a shimmer on there you know see that light shimmering where this one I haven't even touched yet right there so bit of a difference and that uh, that will give you your shine there now at this point with the lighter color you'd basically be done and you'd be able to just move on but like I said we're gonna allow these to sit for just a little while longer and then we're gonna have to move on to at least trying to work on the color a little bit and um, we'll move on to that let me go ahead and finish out the rest of the boots all off camera allow it to all dry and soak in and do what it needs to and we'll see you back here in just a little bit 
few things I did forget to mention, as always. Um, I've got a pair of boot trees in here right now, kind of like this. This one's an oversized one, but I just grabbed it as an example. Now, boot trees and shoe trees are very important to help with a few things because it's going to help uh, wick away moisture after your foot's been perspiring for a good while and uh, kind of help freshen it up as well, especially if they're the cedar ones, the plastic ones. They they don't work as well for that, unfortunately. They're great for travel, though. But the other thing is, you can see that there's that uh, light creasing and cracking all around there. It'll help prevent that significantly from occurring, at least quickly. It's going to occur regardless on some forms of leather. It's just unavoidable, but it'll help reduce that uh, creasing significantly and overall saving your boots because if you're not taking care of that that creasing eventually starts into cracking and then eventually into a hole and then at that point there isn't much that can be done I, I mean th there is a few things to be done but it can get very costly or it doesn't look good in other words if you're wanting to go cheaper out but cedar shoe trees or boot trees are very 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 important if you're plan to have them for quite some time now the other thing I did forget we're gonna go ahead and grab our towel you know before they start to dry or anything grab your brushes and that's if you are using a brush make sure you clean it off to get any access cream dirt or polish off of whatever brush you're using for whatever reason but as you can tell I'm wiping off some of that pigment that came came off as well And this will help extend the life expectancy of these greatly. So, all right, uh, these are almost all done drying. Well, not necessarily drying, but uh, soaking in everything nicely and, and drying, of course, too. And it's not long that I'm going to allow them to dry and sit. It's about uh, maybe 10 minutes, roughly. And we're about more than halfway through, in other words, with the first boot. So I'll go ahead and give it, give it a few more minutes, and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, we'll let these uh, sit for a little while, and now we're going to work on the color on them. Now, in the uh, Saphir Seraphin Cream, or even what they have, their Pomadier Cream, which is a square jar that has the pigment or color, in other words, there is a larger concentration of waxes as well as pigment, as you can tell. And because of that, it does have turpentine in there. That is why I said, you know, be very careful with it, and I don't recommend it. Um, but again, for us, we kind of have to have to use it at this point. It's not gonna use. It's not gonna do too much necessarily, but it'll at least help some with uh, bringing back at least a little bit of pigment into these. Now, after you apply this, you definitely want to allow it at least 15 minutes to dry to let those that turpentine that's in it to evaporate and the waxes to, you know, dry nicely. And again, this is for your next level of experience, in other words. Now, it's not going to do too much as far as the color on these because ostrich is one of those that when they're dyed they're dyed in the sheet still they're not on a boot like this so there are a lot of limitations as far as color restoration or bringing back color it doesn't take on the pigment as well as you would really want it to so you know i mean it did a little a little bit to it you know looks a little shinier too but uh again it's it's one of those things where you just want to be a little, a little more careful with. All right, do this one here, and most of the time you probably have a different color welt as well, so be careful with not getting it on the welt. Otherwise, you're gonna make it look kind of funny. And the welt is this where the sole is stitched on. Now, also, I did forget why I'm using a towel. I didn't say, but. Usually I use another dauber brush. I've got the one there for the color. This is the Saphir number no. three light brown. It matches it perfectly. But because I'm trying to get a little more control in 
how I am spreading everything with the dauber brush you do apply just a little bit more of it unless you're spreading it nice and evenly and it's a little harder to do when you've got uh, multiple shades of colors like the darker edging here and the darker shaft on there so it makes it a little bit easier with this plus I'm really massaging it into there I would rather use the dauber brush but I really don't want it to get anywhere else on there and I'm really trying to get close to that welt as well but in general a dauber brush is what I would prefer to use anyways. So again, I'm going to allow these to sit for a good while. And we're going to move on to the darker ones. Let me grab just a few things real quick for this. All right, now at this point, um, you do want to make sure you take off your gloves. And yes, I'm sitting down. It makes it a little more easier for me to do in this area here. Now we're going to go ahead and apply some wax here. I am not applying any of the seraphin cream to this one it does have more pigment so it can help restore the color definitely more but these don't really need a color restoration on it all we did was really remove some kind of old polish that was on there um, but the coloring is still in great shape and so i'm not going to be putting this on because again we have more waxes in here uh, than the renovator cream so if you were to pick one or the other then if you're gonna just use the cream then you just stick to the cream with the color in it if you're going to use the wax then you just use the wax on ostrich because how soft it is you don't want to use both otherwise they crack very easily the wax is crack and it just looks horrible I mean really horrible and in general I mean right now actually at this point if you're doing this at home yourself I would recommend that you're done you know just buff it over now quick swift motions you're not pressing down hard you're trying to melt up the waxes that were in the renovator cream go around the shaft area here and you're done you know, definitely definitely tell a difference that one's got a lot more of a shine that one not so much right there but that would be a, sorry, I gotta set it aside over there but that would be a finish point at that uh, at this section now but if you really want to bring out more of a shine and more protection because beeswax that's in here and some carnauba wax will definitely help protect those uppers a lot more and we're gonna go ahead and do that because we did a full, we're doing a full upper treatment on it and that's the process. But this is why I take off the gloves is because the fingerprints that you have here do very good to pick up just a small amount of wax. And you just kind of rub it into that upper there a little bit. Just kind of work its way. Now there is of course uh, some turpentine in here as well to soften up the wax enough to be usable so that we can apply it onto the uppers here so we're gonna have to allow these to dry a, a good while now for waxes like this i don't recommend using a dauber brush or anything to, else to apply it with uh, one because there's going to be a mess i mean you can see the coloring on this this is actually from quite a bit of use over the years um, so you know this was just time and time again of using it on this same type of color on different boots but if you were going to be doing that where you take the brush and you daub it or brush it or whatever you're going to destroy your brushes one and two you're going to be applying a little bit too much on these boots here so you definitely want to want to have a good control of how much you're applying again once it dries, I mean, it might look nice on display or just sitting there, but as soon as you wear it, right in these crease areas here where it bends, it's going to crack. That wax is going to crack and it just looks horrible, especially if you're using a neutral color. Neutral is technically clear, but it still has a white hue to it, so you're going to have that, uh, that white showing a lot more, and it's... Uh, it's an eyesore, definitely, so I don't recommend that you 
use neutral, I mean, all the time. Use neutral only on a color that's very hard to match or impossible to match. Now, the other big difference between the uh, waxes, the Pate Deluxe, whether you're using the Beauty De Cure like we are here, or if you're using the cream, the Seraphim cream, or from their Medal Dior, which is their gold label line, which is the next step up, you, um, you got to keep in mind that the cream always has more pigment in it. There's a lot more color to it. So you can potentially change the color slightly on whatever you're working on. Or the waxes, they have less pigment. It's more transparent and it's more of a shine that you're doing for it. So key difference between the two that you're using. But anyways, I'm going to let these dry for about uh, 15, well, for 15 minutes, I'm going to let them dry. That's usually the minimum that I recommend on, on this. And of course, I didn't do the shaft area on either, on either one of the boot styles with the cream or the waxes for a few reasons, mainly because, of course, um, your, your shaft area doesn't get enough wear usually. It's not very visible most of the time. It's covered by a pant leg majority of the time. The other thing is that it has a tendency to bend a lot more and crease in these areas, and it just cracks anyways when the waxes crack so you don't want to do that and the other reason is it's going to rub off onto your clothes anyways very quickly I mean if your pants are coming down to here that area is gonna rub off a little bit but it is more noticeable still so if you have say shorter pants that you know come up to like right there they're not gonna rub that off but if you're putting it up here you're you're causing more harm, harm to your clothing, if anything. It's not gonna do much for the boots. I mean, they're gonna stay shiny for a little while and then it's gonna wear off. But uh, don't do the shafts, just the conditioning in the uh, Delicate Cream or the Renovator. And the other one, of course, is the Reptin Cream too, which is formulated for exotics, but it's, uh, it's more for other types of exotics. I've made a few videos if you wanna check those out. Um, some lizard skins and a few other ones if you want to check them out as well using the reptin which is great stuff for all those for ostrich the delicate cream for the light color of course because you want it to be a little bit safer where the reptin cream does have lanolin in it and it may change the color significantly and make it look blotchy and um, you know the uh, renovator here has got the mink oil in it so it works even better than say the reptin because mink oil is a little a little stronger more nutritious for the leather uppers all right so before i keep talking too much i'm gonna let this one dry and the other ones are still drying as well and i'm gonna finish up the other dark boot off camera real quick and uh, we'll see you back in just a little bit all right so at this point we're basically almost done with these but key thing always horse hair brushes again we're gonna Buff this up using the friction of the brush to remelt those waxes and bring out a bit more of that shine. All right. So one of the key things when somebody comes in, we have that buys cream polish or whatever. I've had a few people ask, "Why are my shoes shiny?" Well, there's a lot more to shining shoes, and always the most important thing for any shoes or boots doesn't matter if they're exotic or not horse hair brushes you got to have at least two one for your light one for your dark if you have a large variety and if you really feel like it's you know having multiple colors like we have this smaller one for the red we got the larger one here for the light brown we got a larger one for medium brown and a dark brown and black and then the lighter the smaller ones we have for odd colors that are not as common um, as well so you know we have bunch of brushes all over the shop everywhere all the time but this kind of gives you an idea both of these have had a cream polish on them this one has no shine to it or anything this one has got more of a shimmer to it because of that friction from the brushes so very important the other thing is why you need the brushes is with us with the Saphir products in general you know if you come into us and the reason why we say the shine lasts longer yes it does last longer than a normal uh, product that you may use uh, of course it's more natural so it's more nutrition uh, it brings in more nutrition back to the leather as well 
but also if your shoes are starting to look a little shabby or your boots and you know that we use the if you brought them to us you know that we use Saphir products on there or if you know that you used it as well you just take your horsehair brush first thing in the morning when you get up when you're about to be putting on your boots just grab your horsehair brush and just buff them over like this to help remelt the waxes a little bit and bring out that shine again the other thing is when you get home after working or whatever you were doing a uh, night out if you take your horse hair brush again you'll be able to brush it over and get any dirt debris or grime off of there during that time you're able to inspect that in case you might have dropped something on there you can take care of it right away if you're at an event and you accidentally drop some food and you didn't notice before it's a lot better to catch it in time before waiting otherwise certain things like olive oil for example can be extremely damaging to exotic leathers even regular leather and it becomes very potent and impossible to remove there are a lot of ways of countering that or at least you know putting a band-aid on it until you take your boots to a professional to take care of it as soon as possible um, there are other things of course you can drop on it too that you never know maybe some kind of mystery stain as well so just uh take action quickly um having some kind of baby powder on hand just in case if you dropped any kind of food will really help a lot just sprinkle it on leave it overnight and then afterwards you have to go through a full cleaning and treating process like we did here other leathers you may have to do a few extra steps possibly too maybe a little bit less it just varies from different types and of course as always you know you could always give us a call send us pictures if you're not local or something would be happy to walk you through it or help however we can with that so let me set these aside here and do the same thing with these ones now these of course are going to shine a little bit more because it's got the actual wax on it Darker colors are always easier to maintain if you're shopping around. Very, uh, very obvious, of course. Dark is easier. Now, when you get a brand new pair of especially an exotic, you always want to do a full treatment on them. Not necessarily the cleaning steps, but at the least conditioning them. And, you know, maybe even adding a wax coat over top it just depends on what type of leather. But with ostrich in particular, use your conditioning creams. Very important, brand new out of the box. You don't know how long those boots have been sitting there at the on the shelf in the store. And maybe they were sitting at the factory where they were manufactured for a good while on the shelf as well. You don't know how dried out that leather may possibly be. Here in Colorado, we're a very dry state, so things can dry out very quickly and dry rot. So you just wanna make sure that you bring back the nutrients and that kind of helps you start building your shine off of it too if you plan to make, make your shoes or boots or whatever you may have shiny. Exotic leathers are the same way. They definitely need their nutrition back and you just don't know. It doesn't hurt that you may have used this an extra, as an extra step or whatever and they were pre-treated before somehow, but it doesn't hurt with uh, the delicate, uh, delicate Cream, the Reptin Cream, or the Renovator. All three of those are perfectly fine to use. There are other products such as Big Four that work great. The only reason why I don't tend to stand behind Big Four is they don't disclose at least their key ingredients, so I don't know what's in there. Plus, because it's non-darkening as well, when you get into a darker color like this, something a little stronger like the Renovator Cream that has the mink oil in there will definitely help a lot more with the conditioning and doesn't have to be applied as often. All right, so let me get a few things together here. All right, so we're done at this point with, uh, you know, doing a full upper treatment on there. It's two different ways of doing ostrich skin. Now to kind of recap uh, on what we did on everything, um, we did a full treatment again. This isn't your basic, you know, once a month or once every six month type treatment or anything like that. This was a full on treatment that we recommend doing maybe once every, you know, six to 12 months, somewhere around there where we're able to clean it, remove any old polishes on there, give it a little bit of treatment and uh, a fresh coat of any waxes or whatever it may need. And again, about once every six to 12 months, you could either bring it into us or if you're wanting to take all those steps that we just did, 
Uh, with the darker ones, of course, we have, well, with both of them, we start out with our uh, spray bottle here that's got the mixture of vinegar, desalter, and easy cleaner in it. Um, now, if you're doing this at home, you probably don't have large quantities of the easy cleaner or desalter. You know, if you do a full treatment where you have salt or water damage, start out with the desalter first. Uh, just put it on a rag and just kind of scrub it all over with the rag as well. If you, you know, manage to get good quantities of this and you put it in a spray bottle, spray it down like I did and just use a nylon brush like that soft bristle, not a hard bristle. There are some harder bristled ones. Um, Angelus makes a great one. They have a uh, kit with their easy cleaner there. Works very well. I'd recommend if you want, check it out. I think it's like $14.95 or something like that. We have them here at our shop for that kit. Uh, the next step that we took uh, was a little was the uh, sorry the reno mat on there I'm losing my train of thought there the reno mat again I don't recommend you using it if you're not experienced this is kind of an extreme measure in other words when you start using the reno mat on ostrich skin especially um, because there is the turpentine in there and it's uh, one, it dries out the leather, so you got to make sure you're conditioning it very quickly afterwards. And two, also you may remove some of the original dye pigment from either one of these. Black, it, it won't remove as much dye pigment at all in general, but these ones, oops, drop my bottle there. These ones here, they'll show some staining possibly on there if you're a little too, you know, you're wiping is a little too vigorous and this one you'll start removing the pigment out of there so just be careful with that and um, if at all possible skip that and let a professional take care of it like we can for you then afterwards we use the delicate cream for the light color um, again because it's uh, wheat protein and jojoba oil so it's not a very strong conditioner if you're going to be conditioning these on average with the light color with the delicate cream because it's not as strong or as potent as say something that has a mink oil or lanolin base in it then i would recommend doing that maybe once every month to two months depending on how often you wear them at least here for us in colorado if you're in a state that's a little more humid probably once every two months would be closer that i would say um, but here for colorado once a month to once every two months and then with the darker one with a darker one of course we use the renovator there the renovator's got the mink oil in there and some beeswax as well with the darker colors it will definitely restore a lot more nutrients so that i would say uh, probably once every two months to three months roughly just because the renovator is a little bit stronger uh, then the delicate cream you could also use the reptin cream if you have that the reptin cream it's got your lanolin in there and uh, wax extract so say you have a large selection of exotics and you manage to only get the reptin cream and not the renovator because you're limited on your exotics on what you can use the renovator on there's very few exotics that you could use it on but you can use the reptin you just may have to use it a little more frequently maybe that once every month or two at that point um, because lanolin is not as as heavy a conditioning agent afterwards we ended up using the seraphin cream the number three brown light brown for these to restore some color and put some wax over top i don't recommend using it um, if you're not experienced again if you do you're not going to get too much coloring restored anyways um, just because again ostrich doesn't like to take on pigment as easily that's why the darker ones here they're layered usually anyways and then for the darker one we use the pate deluxe wax on there as well so gives it a little bit of nice shimmer mostly what we rely on with the wax and uh, the seraphim cream at least with the ostrich is to bring out more of a shine in other words you know if you just use the delicate cream or the renovator or the reptin you still have a little bit of a shine that comes through where if you use uh, the pigmented wax or the cream it's really gonna bring out more of a shine as well so you know if, if you're wanting an extreme extreme like army style shine I don't recommend doing that not on ostrich you know that usually do just the toe area on 
on that anyways, but I just don't recommend it because that's a really hard wax. It uses carnauba wax, which is very hard, and at some point or another, you're gonna kick something on accident and it's gonna crack. And because of how soft ostrich is, you may potentially damage that ostrich a fair amount. So definitely don't use that. The other thing is, of course, because of all these, almost all these products, except for, well, Delicate Cream does have a wax extract, same thing with the Reptin, but all these other ones here, the, Reno, uh, the Renovator, the Seraphin, and the Pate Deluxe, they all have waxes in there. They're also going to help protect those uppers. Water beads up on wax, it just rolls off. So you don't need to use any kind of waterproofers over top of it. But if you are getting a brand new pair, I do highly recommend that you treat them. So start out with your Delicate Cream, or your renovator cream and then put a coat of waterproof over top because you don't really need to use pigment or wax polish over top of it um, you know if you're trying to keep that same original look just condition only and waterproof uh, usually i recommend something that's a water-based waterproofer like we have our four seasons waterproofer which i i ran out of my last bottle up here i have to grab some more from up front later but um it's water-based it's a little more delicate and safer if you use something that's got a silicone or polymer in it it is a little too strong one because afterwards you're not going to be able to treat and condition the uppers as easily it's not going to penetrate into that so it stays on there longer the other thing is it clogs up the pores and it kind of starts to degrade that leather a little quicker than you would really want it to so water-based no silicone no polymer in the um, in the waterproofer Anyways, oh, and final thing also, again, we had resold both of these here already, put new soles and heels on, but if you haven't had yours resold, um, this really comes in handy. This is the Saphir Medal Dior line uh, Soul Guard. It's a vegetable oil based, it's 100% vegetable oil, but they pick out specific vegetables and they um, filter it in such ways where it is formulated to help treat the bottom of the soles everyone always forgets to treat the bottom here always and this will help restore the nutrients into the leather extending that life expectancy and it'll give it just a little bit of waterproofing not crazy amounts of waterproofing like you get from say a regular waterproof sprayer uh, spray that you may use but it helps at least some there's a lot of uh, people out there that love this stuff and there are people that hate it and there are people that are just doubtful about it and then of course, don't forget about your edging. We didn't do anything with the edging here because we already had to put a wax finish on it on our machines. But Phoebe's edge, dresser, edge, edge dressing, sorry, I can't talk again, comes in handy. Comes in uh, brown and black. The brown is a little on the darker side, but that will help significantly. And then if you have your pate deluxe wax like this, just take your fingers and rub it in there. That will kind of give it a nice uh, shine and shimmer afterwards. You know, we have machines back here that varnishes a, a harder, much harder wax into the edges here all around, so it really holds up longer. But you know, you can't exactly get a machine like that to just do your edging at home. So, you know, take those steps with the Phoebe's edge dressing to restore the color and then to bring out more of a shine for that edge dressing, some Pate Deluxe Wax. And then of course, allow it to dry. You could do that during the process of already treating the uppers if you already did the etching on it with the Phoebings. Put your color on the side there and then let it dry for about 15 minutes and then buff it over and it'll look great. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a full treatment of ostrich skin boots, two different ways because they are two different colors. Um, I was very happy that this gentleman had both of these boots for me to be able to work on doing the same thing at the same time so that I can show side by side that coloring can play a big, big role in what kind of uh, leather you may have. You know, you may be telling me that these are tan. Well, technically they are a light brown by almost every other cream uh, standards as well as almost every other brand of shoemaker or boot. You know, to you this might be tan, to another person these are actually light brown, you know, or you might be thinking these are medium brown and we end up giving you a darker color on accident. So, always recommend that you bring in whatever items you're trying to match the color up for. But, uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video, hope this was very informative for you to make sure that you take care of your exotics, especially ostrich. It's a very finicky upper, so 
take good care of it if you planned on it. I hope you enjoyed everything that uh, that I showed about uh, taking care of the ostrich. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you're here in the Denver area, please feel free to stop by for questions or if you want us to work on any of your boots, shoes, or other leather goods. If you're not local, you could always go to our website, cobblersplus.com. All of our contact information is there, our phone number, Facebook page, Instagram, our email addresses. So if you need to send us some pictures for questions or you know what we would recommend or anything for certain types of uppers, send us an email or give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help with that. If you're wanting us to work on any of your shoes, boots, or other leather goods as well and you're not local you can always ship them into us just follow the uh, tab at the top that says ship in orders or mail in orders i can't remember which one it was but follow the instructions on there uh, fill out the pdf file pack them away ship them out to us and within a few days we'll give you a call once we receive them to talk over the repair process what we would recommend what kind of options you may have after we uh, you know get that taken care of we'll schedule them out and once they're ready we'll ship them out to you all right so yeah, thank you for watching again. And if you enjoyed it and want to see more videos on treating exotics and as well as uh, repairs, how we do resoles like these ones I didn't do the video on, a few other ones I have, you know, please subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we release release a new video. I'm trying to stay to you know posting at least once a week on average. It's of course a little hard to do that i'm not a professional videographer or anything like that i'm a cobbler by trade i'm second generation this is what i do this is what i know i'm not a professional camera guy or a video editor so i do the best i can and if you got any pro tips or anything if you're a professional camera guy let me know i'll let you know what to do with your boots and other leather items as well on my end all right well we'll just see you next time then